Let's take a look at these questions that go along with the periodic table topic. So make sure every time when you're doing questions with short answer that if there's any information given above, you go ahead and you check it out. Also, you'll notice I crossed out questions here that belong to other topics. We're focusing our attention here for 2015 tests, the periodic table topic. So you'll take a look and see those questions in other videos based on the topic it belongs in. All right, so let me erase this and let's take a look at question one. So for question one, we're looking to identify the group on the periodic table to which element D belongs. Well, in order to figure that out, I have to go up and take a look at my table. And the easiest way to identify the group is taking a look when element D is bonding with oxygen, um, how many atoms of element D I need. Oxygen has a charge of minus 2 when it's going to go ahead and form this bond. And let me take a look over here and show you. Again, we're looking for group numbers. These are all group numbers. We're looking for element D. I think it said in period 3, so really we don't need those. It's any of these. And for oxygen, if we take a look, oxygen's in group 16. It needs two more electrons to feel like a noble gas, which is here. And you'll also notice a lot of times I tell my students, you know what, look at those oxidation numbers because those also give us ion charges when we're dealing with bonding. So that's where the minus 2 is coming in for oxygen. And you'll notice there's only one oxygen and two of element D. So guess what? That must mean each element, uh, atom of element D is giving up one electron. If it's a plus one charge, if we take a look, it means it's in group one. So it's here. So the answer for number one here would be group one. All right, let's take a look at the bottom. We have three questions that go along here with a couple of sentences about um, the elements in group 16. So let's take a look at question two. That identify the, an element in group uh, 14 that is classified as a metalloid. A metalloid or a semi-metal, you should know this. Let me clear this. Are elements that have properties of metals and nonmetals, kind of separates them all, if you will. The semi-metals or metalloids are the elements that I say sit on the staircase, and then there's two below. Well, we're looking at group 14 specifically, so you have two different elements that are semi-metals or metalloids, so Si and Ge. Si is silicon, Ge is germanium, so you could use either one as your answer here. SI or GE. Question two. Explain in terms of electron shells why each successive element in group 14 has a larger atomic radius as the elements are considered in order of increasing atomic number. Well, let's take a look. In order of increasing atomic number, look at what's going on as far as electron configuration you're adding another shell of electrons. So the number of electron shells increases as you go down the group, which means that you have a larger atomic radius as you go down the group. So that's all you have to say. Number of shells increases as I go down a group, which increases the atomic radius. Let's move on to question four. State the expected number of valence electrons I'm sorry, valence electrons in an atom of this element. I can't even pronounce this in the ground state. If I go back, the wording here is given for this element U, U, Q. And valence electrons, you need to know the definition is the outermost electrons. So I already have the electron configurations circled. The last number is the valence electrons, the outermost electrons. And let's throw lead in the mix, too. So guess what? For UUQ, it would also be four valence electrons. So that's my answer for question four. This was the periodic table short answer questions from the 2015 Regents exam.